All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. And as you can see, I'm jumping right into this thing. So if you're ready, one, then two, we're going in. One, two. Let's go. All right. <laughs> so uh, as you can see by the title, Six Game Changing Ways I Practice Playing Time. We're talking about time. Um, and I want you to remember something. Just because you have perfect time does not mean you have a great feel. However, if you work on your great on your feel a lot, like I do, which I'm going to show you, um, your time is going to improve exponentially. So as you can hear, I'm using a bass play along track that I've created for you and me, for all drummers who want to work on their time and their feel. This is something I do every day. It's about a 30-minute routine and it keeps me in shape, especially when I, I don't have a lot of gigs. And it's 20% off until the end of this month. So check it out, the link will be down below. But what I love about it, many of you probably already practice with recordings. There is no replacing that. That is like number one. Uh, and so don't one, stop doing two, that. However, one, two, three, four. as I'm kind of adjusting to the, te the new temples, I'm playing along to this play along track that keeps going through different tempos, so I'll see if I can keep up. Um, but what I love about practicing to this track or something similar to it, where it's just bass, right? I can really isolate the idea or the concept of playing time in different ways. I'm gonna show you six ways that I do that, okay? So the first way is this. I just play the ride some just quarter notes. And it's, maybe it seems a little over simple, but we have to remember that the, the quarter note is king. And if we kind of feel comfortable with where the quarter note is and what the quarter note is doing at different tempos, our time is going to improve. So that's the first way, okay? Okay? doing my best trying to talk and play at the same time. It's not easy, guys. Okay, so then, after that, so now I'm trying to get my skip beat in order, so to speak. How do I want my skip beat to feel? Because that really affects the overall feel of our ride symbol. Um, right? And another thing that I, a reason why I love play, playing with this solely bass play along track is because I can record myself and check out how it feels, right? When you're playing with a, uh, an album or an actual, a real you know, track from a CD, you can't really hear yourself as well. Unless it's a drummerless uh, track. Those are, those are great. But, so that's another thing I do, I record myself. When you add your skip beat, that can really one to the feel two, one, of your ride. Two, three, so, four. so how do you want your skip beat to feel? You want it to be wide? You want it to have an accent like this? Right? You want it to have a little more tight? There's so many different ways to play it, right? And maybe I'll do another lesson on that. But the point is that we're really trying to be as consistent with the, the skip beat as possible. Okay, so now, The next way, okay, is I add my feet. That's it. And I don't, I usually I don't even have my, the left, the stick in my left hand. I just keep my hand open. That's it. Boom. Right? You can also do this with just playing chord notes. And I'm really trying to focus on balance. Again, I'm in, in the bass drum, I'm feathering. If you don't have your feathering together, don't let that kind of hold you back if you're not comfortable feathering. But this is a great time to work on it in the practice room. And make sure everything is in sync. Right? Nice and clear and strong two and four in the left foot. And keep everything consistent. 
And check out my technique, wrists. Not just fingers, not just wrists, and certainly not arms. Allow the stick to bounce, but also control the bounce and control the stick as much as needed to make sure that there's some weight in your quarter note. Okay, so. The next way I, I practice my time, now I add my left hand. And I might, I might pick a beat, like a, maybe I'll just play the ends of two and four, okay? Maybe I'll just riff on that. One, two, one, two, three, four. Ah, right? Or maybe I'll go and of one and of three. Or maybe I'll just play quarter notes here and play the, all the upbeats in the left hand. Let's see what that sounds like. So now I'm creating like a shuffle. Let's see if I can get it to feel good though. Right? So that's another way that I practice with this play along, which again is available. The link is down below, 20% off until the end of this month. Game changer guys, you gotta check it out. Okay, the next way I like to practice with this play along and to work on my time. Just like I was doing with the snare drum, I'll involve my bass drum. And maybe I'll, I'll, I'll kind of play off of a riff, a consistent riff, or just, right? Or I'll just, maybe I'll just count freely between the snare drum and bass drum. Right? Another thing is, do I want my ride cymbal to stay consistent and unchanging like that in comp? You should be able to do that, right? But you should also, of course, be able to play more of a uh, integrated approach to, to comping, where your comp notes influence your ride and your ride influence your comp notes. So, so I can start to dance a little bit more in one, the ride symbol. Two, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm getting faster. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. <laughs> okay, so. Another way I like to practice is with these guys. Brushes, right? We cannot neglect the brushes. They're so important, right? So. And I forgot to say, you should be practicing along with me. If you're at a kit, hopefully you are practicing with me. Right? And I'm doing the exact same thing I was doing as on the ride. I'm just doing it with brushes now. And I'm focusing on feel, consistency, technique, sound. Do I want more of a dry sound like that by pressing all the way down in the left hand? You hear that? It's pretty dry. Or do I want more of an open sound like that? Right? The last way I like to use this bass play along track to practice my time, I know you're gonna have to say, that's not time. Well, in a roundabout way it is. I like to work on my soloing with the bass play along track. And the reason is because it forces you to really listen to the time as you're playing. Usually, we just take a solo, we don't have to listen and pay attention to other stuff. This forces us to really pay attention listen while we're playing ideas so 
Um, we're not just playing freely and, and uh, forgetting about the time. So, one, two, three, four. Uh, use space. Right? Uh. One, two, one, two, three, four. Does that all make sense? Hopefully it does. And as I always say at the end of all my videos, you got to work on this. Practice hard, but practice smart. And I really do mean that because if you're going in the, in the shed um, kind of hopelessly and aimlessly with no real clear objection or objective, then your practice is not going to yield any results. So make sure you practice hard, but practice smart. Peace out, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.